Today I want to share with you my lessons learned from hiring over 1,000 people over the last decade. My name is Deepak Shukla. I'm the founder at the Pearl Lemon Group. We're a multi seven figure business that has an entirely distributed and remote team. And I want to walk you through our journey over the last six years and talk you through the six lessons that I have learned that I would love for you to apply when it comes to recruitment especially if you're bootstrapping or on a budget. So number one, people will stay for culture. So as much as money, of course, is a factor, as much as building a career path is a factor, one of the things that money can't optimize for, one of the things that fundamentally a career path can't do is have people that stay for the culture of the company, okay? So the nature and spirit and the camaraderie and the direction ultimately of the company, okay? So that's something that if you build carefully enough, people will stay for the culture of the company. Our culture is we are hardworking, we have a shared vision, we are determined to fundamentally deliver for our clients and all of these things become composite parts of a company's culture, okay? It's the way that people feel when they're at work, okay? It's the way that people operate as a team when they're at work, okay? So people will stay for culture, okay? People will come maybe for money, come for career development, but a lot of people will stay for culture, okay? And this is something that the more that you're able to bake in and it's the intangibles, it's the funny messages that exchange with each other, it is the questions that you ask about people's personal lives, it is the energy, the verve, the ultimately flavor in terms of the feeling of the company that people will stay for. So people will stay for culture. So building a strong culture is paramount to a company's success, okay? So people will stay for culture. Culture is also to that end something that money can't buy, okay? People will stay for money, but the level of money that's required to keep them there will go up and up and up. But culture is something that money can't buy, and culture will then also often breed loyalty, okay? So that's where culture and ultimately retention become really powerful and in many respects more powerful than money and career development because you'll find and you'll know people that are in jobs where they maybe complain intermittently or maybe they have no desire to get promoted because they get comfortable because they like the office environment they like the people that they work with so culture can also compose of teammates of colleagues of people that you laugh and share your journey with and if you optimize for those things, you will find that people will stay for the culture that you built at your company. So do your best to build that out, okay? Talking of building, let's go to number two. Build, in, build inside out and outside in, okay? So inside out, we've already made reference to it when it comes to culture, but also in combination with that, there was something else that I mentioned. So building career development, so is there a general development pathway that people take in different departments or overall at the company? What does that look like? How often do you do performance reviews? How often do you do promotional reviews? How often do you give performance feedback? How often or how do you fundamentally manage conflict, manage tension, manage burnout, support your team, elevate your team, reward your team, inspire your team? How do they, and this is also the kicker when we talk about building inside out, how do they motivate each other, inspire each other, reward each other, support each other, console each other, confide in each other. So it's not just you, because I'll mimic, for example, you if you're the team leader, how is it that they support each other, okay? Now, these things become really important because what you want to build when it comes to hiring is you want to find your great people, okay? You wanna find your great people and you want to ensure that you keep your great people and that you then build more great people or more people that are like your great people. So making sure that you build inside out and making sure that you're aware and ahead of any problems becomes so, so important, okay? So building inside out as well as building outside in. So outside in is perception. 
it's career opportunities, it's salaries posted, it's job boards that are listed, it's your reviews online, it's people's perception about you, it's what they talk about when it comes to threads online in forums, when it comes to recruitment portals, when it comes to content that's on video platforms such as YouTube. So looking at what the marketplace publicly is saying about you and how accurate that is and ensuring it's accurate and ensuring it presents you in the best light will then heighten your ability to recruit top tier, top caliber candidates. So that's what I mean when I say it's important to build outside, inside out, inside out and outside in, inside out and outside in. And if you combine these two, but you see them as somewhat separate entities in terms of the work that you do, you tend to attract by default, a higher level of candidate, a higher caliber of candidate, which will then offer you fortune and ability to optimize your recruitment process, your interview process for better candidates by making the process tougher than it has previous been, previously been. So that's the second point. The third point to think about is developing economies house amazing talent. So developing economies house amazing talent. So this is something that is something that, that is a matter of choice. I hire, we at Parliament currently hire predominantly for or in South Africa, in India, in the Pakistan, less so in the Philippines, but there are three hiring hubs. We also have people that are dotted about in the UK as well as Europe, as well as the USA. Okay, so we do have UK, USA, Europe, Canada also. So let's say North America, and they'll typically be frontline people, okay? Our account management team and some of our operations team are in South Africa and our back office team are in India and Pakistan. And what we tend to do is aim to get top tier talent from each of those countries because of the economics of the currency, but also for specific things that relate to developing economies that are in more abundance in those regions. And we'll go on to talk about this also in a bit of a separate thread, but it means, and it, it, practically it means you can take your currency further. It means that if you're selling in fundamentally pounds and then you hire based upon the South African rand, you can get really good caliber people in South Africa for fundamentally two thirds to a third sometimes for what you get in the UK, but you'll still get a UK level of quality. Now the inverse to that people might argue is that overall talent pool is smaller, but what tends to happen is that there's fewer international companies that are hiring in these economies. Now, there's different challenges that come with these economies that relate because there's often or sometimes political instability or economic instability in these countries. There's issues that relate to power supply, that relates to Wi-Fi. But if you bake that into your recruitment process and then you only hire with a filter based upon what is requisite for the role, as well as requisite for a UK standard, simple example being that some of our accounts team don't get on client calls. So the client presentation, their internet in terms of having to have a clear crystal video call isn't as necessary as someone who's in account management. So developing economies tend to hire or tend to house amazing talent. So get after it in, in developing economies, okay? That's point number three. Point number four is hire the working class. So what do I mean by that? I mean that anyone who's in a working class environment, anyone's an exaggeration, but many people then optimize for hard work. The working class tend to work hard and that means that the level of output that you'll get in terms of diligence, in terms of attention, in terms of desire to want to get things done tends to be quite effective. It really does tend to work quite well. And what that ultimately translates to is more effort at work, more work ethic related to work, and as a result, over time, more output. So that's something that I've seen, generally generally speaking, that has been quite, quite, quite effective in terms of our hiring. So that's bucket number four. Bucket number five is optimize for development. So if you think short term, getting in an experienced hire immediately is great because you can solve an immediate problem. If you're thinking long term, getting in people that can stay with you and develop with you over the arc of weeks, months and years, 
you can get some incredibly high caliber people that are just either starting out on their journey or just making a career switch or just returning to work. So they tend to be the three areas, returning to work, career switch, or coming out of academia. And if you look at any of these buckets, and if you focus upon the development of that person, especially if you have a really thoroughbred recruitment and training and development process, you can build and develop in-house some incredible talent. Our best people at our company, in nine out of 10 cases, came up through our recruitment and training program and learned everything they know at Pearl Lemon directly. So if you're able to optimize for the development of people, and that means training programs, that means onboarding, that means videos, that means one-to-one -one support, that means fundamentally building, again, a culture of continuous learning and development, you'll find you'll be able to get some incredible talent that will come in, be self-starters, have initiative. And this is where we go back or we refer back to point number three, which is developing economies, how to mine amazing talent. Number two, building inside out. Number four, hire the working class. And therefore, number five, if you optimize for development, you can get some wicked people for fundamentally inexpensive rates because they are beginning their journey and they choose to begin it with your company. So that's number five. Number six is street smarts plus hard work is mostly better than experience. So I'll say that again, street smarts and hard work is mostly better than experience. So that's where you can, through testing on the job, through a rigid recruitment process, through aptitude and technical tests, we use platforms. You can, there's lots of technical and aptitude test portals online, find one of them and they can do time tests, they make the webcam stay on. They do IP detection, browser fingerprint detection to stop people, like anti-cheating mechanisms built in. So if you make the recruitment process tough, you'll find that then the need to rely upon previous work experience, previous resumes, previous academic education, which can all be falsified, is inferior to testing on the job. Those initial pieces are useful yardsticks, but then subsequent to that, it becomes about their ability to do the role. And this is something where street smarts and hard work can be mostly better than experience because experienced hires tend to come with their own set of challenges depending upon the role that you hire for. But you need to marry up potential for development, experience and culture and they all need to line up to some level to ensure that you get the best from all your team. And number seven, my final point is there's always exceptions to the last six rules. So... Point number seven is that with all of that being said, you have to display a degree of openness. So keep 80% of the things that you do that are tried and true, true by always trying to keep them true by doing them. And then the 20% can be the experimentation again. That's where number seven comes in, that there's always exceptions to the last six rules because there'll be people that break the mold, people that don't sit inside, fit inside the box because these are all not hard and fast, fast rules, but these are strong suggestions, prob you know, probability, likely probabilities with likely outcomes, but these aren't certainties. There'll always be an exception or, or, or three if you run it at about a 10%, a 10 team rate. I would say then that, yeah, I mean, at Pearl Lemon, there's 75 people right now. And if I think about I mean, it's tough. If I think about all six of those rules, there's people that match those rules to a different degree. And as we get better at our recruitment process, we're getting better at identifying the people that probably aren't a fit based upon the direction that we want to head in. And this is the direction, as well as the culture that we want to instill. So, so whilst there's always exceptions to this rule, and that's rule number seven, the other six rules still really do apply. So I'll go through them again. Number one, people will stay for culture. Number two, build inside out and outside in. And number three, developing economies house amazing talent. Number four, hire the working class. Number five, optimize for development. Number six, street smarts and hard work is mostly better than experience. And number seven, there's always exceptions to the last six rules. So that's my advice and they're my insights for lessons learned from hiring over a thousand people.